Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, I want to thank Dr. Uh, Petros and Dr. Brewington to give me this opportunity to talk on this topic. Um, as we all know that we have three types of chest CT scan, non-contrast chest CT, high resolution, and contrast enhanced CT of the chest. A little about technical considerations. There are two ways to do a CT scan of the chest, a non-helical scan or a skip and shoot method, and a helical or continuous spiral uh, method. And the advantage of helical scan over non-helical skip and shoot is that it is a faster scan. You can get the entire volume of the lung in a single breath hold. It has less artifacts in terms of breathing and motion. And you can do multi-planar displays from the axial images. You can reconstruct sagittal and coronal images. And you can also get, um, you can do post-processing of the raw data to get um, beautiful 2D and three-dimensional uh, three reformatted images. Um, skip and shoot or non-helical me non method has been replaced by helical method um, to do the routine chest CTs and contrast enhanced CTs um, uh, mostly everywhere. But for high resolution chest CT, in some institutes, uh, they do follow the skip and shoot method. And I will be talking about the disadvantage and the advantage of each. The, um, so this is a slide which is showing the, C the patient entering into the CT gantry. And uh, we can see that the importance of uh, CT in this uh, image is on the, in the inferior portion of the uh, slide, which are showing not only the lungs, but also the mediastinum and the bone. And um, evaluation of mediastinum is important in terms of evaluating lymph nodes, aorta, and pulmonary artery. And um, at the same time, you can uh, look for any bone lesions and lung lesions. So first, I will be talking about the indications for a non-contrast routine chest CT. It is mainly indicated for patients who have a negative, equivocal, or nonspecific chest X-ray to evaluate solitary pulmonary nodules that are detected on chest X-ray, and they are followed up with um, uh, subsequent chest CTs. And in patients who get positive, uh, who have positive chest X-ray, but a non-infectious disease is suspected, or if they have non-resolving pneumonia, or if multiple diffuse or confluent opacities. In addition, lung cancer screening is going to be coming a big way uh, as a, an indication for non-contrast chest CT, and Dr. Brington will be talking about uh, this uh, later in the day. Um, other indications also include treatment planning for radiation therapy and performance of CT-guided interventional procedures. Coming to high-resolution chest CT, a little about technical considerations. So it's a little different from the routine chest CT because we use bone algorithm to get sharp um, and crisp images. And we use very fine cuts to detect a pathology that is even less than one millimeter or five millimeter, 0 0.5 millimeter. And this particular image is a high-resolution image of the lungs, which is nicely showing the um, thickened interlobular septum. This uh, is outlining the secondary pulmonary lobule. And this patient has interstitial pulmonary edema. So you can nicely see that the central lobular artery, which is in the center of the centri uh, secondary pulmonary lobule, is 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter in size. And you can see those uh, vessels on the CT scan. So as I talked earlier, there are two ways to obtain um, high resolution CT scan. The skip and shoot method um, basically uses 1 millimeter uh, slices at every 10 millimeter gap. And the disadvantage is that you're losing a lot of uh, lung volume here because the gap is not imaging the lung tissue. So when you're reading the scans you, uh, and you have to follow vessels or bronchi or even look at nodules, it is an advantage to have a um, volumetric multi-slice CT scan because you can obtain re, uh, you know, sagittal and chronal reconstructions and do reformattings. So this uh, particular slide is showing that you have limited images through the lung when you're using a 10 millimeter interslice gap. And with the volumetric multi slice CT, you have more of lung to uh, see. And um, in addition, you can do multiple uh, manipulations like um, this. This patient had a lobular pneumonia. And this is a minimum intensity projection image which highlights the pixels which, have very, which are very low in attenuation. So the airways will appear very dark, and you can nicely see these air bronchograms in going into the lobular consolidations. The, uh, this particular image is a maximum intensity projection image, which highlights the pixels, which are very high in attenuation. So the vessels can be seen nicely going into these lobular consolidations. And this is a sagittal minimum intensity projection image. This basically highlights the um, contrast between the airways and the lungs. 
the lungs have diffuse ground glass opacities, and this uh, finding was very subtle on the axial images, but when we did this reformat, you can see the contrast difference between the uh, dark airways, which are highlighted by the minimum intensity projection and the surrounding ground glass opacities. In addition, you can do some 3D uh, volume rendering um, reconstruction, showing beautifully the extent of the disease on the PEA and lateral uh, projections. So what are the indications for high-resolution chest CT? It is mainly used for patients who have chronic cough and exertional dyspnea with clinically suspected diffuse pulmonary disorders and normal or equivocal chest radiographs. It is also used to evaluate fever in an immunocompromised patient and um, for progressive or chronic shortness of breath with restrictive pulmonary function tests and uh, suspected idiopathic interstitial pneumonia. In addition, it is um, very useful in evaluating obstructive lung uh, patterns with suspected small and or large airway disease. Um, patients who have decreased diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide and diffuse pulmonary diseases which are discovered on a routine chest x-ray, a routine uh, non-contrast or contrast enhanced chest CT, or even uh, other CT exams like body CT where you get the um, image the lung bases. Additional indications also include to select appropriate site for biopsy of diffuse lung diseases, to quantify the extent of diffuse lung diseases and evaluate effectiveness of treatment and in patients with pulmonary artery hypertension to rule out interstitial lung disease as a cause. So this image is showing a routine CT scan of the chest. There is a ground glass nodule, ill-defined. But look at how beautiful this image is. It is very sharp and crisp and shows the nodule really nicely. We all know that uh, fibrotic uh, lung disease has an association with collagen vascular disease and autoimmune disease, so I'm going to cite some examples to highlight the importance. This patient um, had history of rheumatoid arthritis, and she developed a chronic uh, onset of dyspnea and uh, uh, cough for about three to four months. Her initial cardiac workup was negative. The chest x-ray is pretty unremarkable. Look at the CT scan. You see some lines here. And I'm, I've magnified that image. These particular lines are basically signs of early fibrosis. So this way, uh, we could diagnose early fibrotic changes in this patient, and treatment was started. This patient is a 60-year-old female non-smoker who had, um, again, a chronic dyspnea. And her workup revealed a uh, serum markers that were positive for lymphangiomyomatosis. The chest x-ray is very unremarkable, not showing much. But then the CT scan showed these small cysts. and um, helped in confirmation of the suspicious, uh, the suspected diagnosis. I would also like to highlight the importance of additional scans that we do with high resolution chest CT. In addition to this uh, supine scan, we also do prone scans and expiratory scans. And uh, this particular patient who had scleroderma and six months of progressive dyspnea got the supine high resolution scan. A non-trained eye, eye may say that these are just dependent ground glass opacities because the patient did not inspire well, or is this early interstitial thickening? So we did the prone scan. And on the prone scan, you see that the ground glass opacities and the thin reticulations persist. And that's how you can diagnose early interstitial lung disease in these patients, and treatment can be started. In addition, um, we do expiratory scans, and there are two ways to do it, static and dynamic. And um, just to highlight the importance of that, this particular patient had a parakeet for 15 years, and um, uh, he developed a chronic dyspnea and cough for the past six months. The chest CT scan was very remarkable for this. And you can see this is the expiratory scan. There is a posterior bowing of the trachea, which shows these very low attenuation areas, which, was, uh, which, are, which are basically uh, areas of air trapping. In addition, you can see upper low fibrotic changes. And this together, this constellation of finding was very highly suggestive of chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis in a patient with a positive exposure. So uh, this, uh, this particular scan helped in making the diagnosis without the uh, use of biopsy. But unfortunately, the patient did not want to get rid of the parakeet. I think some people uh, value their pets more than their lives. So anyways. So um, the other indications include serial high-resolution chest CT scans are done to show, progressive versus, um, to, to show progression versus stability of disease extent and fibrosis. And why is this important? Because this impacts the timing of management and also can upgrade the patient on the lung transplantation list. An important indication also includes to rule out acute exacerbations in patients who have sudden decline of their clinical status. And um, in patients who cannot get a lung biopsy, but they had, have non-specific pattern on high-resolution chest CT. 
Um, it is very important to be able to um, suggest a, uh, the pattern of fibrosis on the high resolution chest CT, as we can see on this coronal image. We can see the uh, fibrotic changes are predominantly in the lower lobes, and there's a lot of honeycombing. And this pattern is very consistent with the UIP pattern disease. And it is important to know this because this portends a very poor survival, as you can see by this on this graph, compared to the fibrotic NSIP pattern, which has a much higher survival rate. And this particular slide shows how uh, fast the progression of fibrosis has occurred in this patient. You can see uh, traction bronchiectasis and reticulations here, and this was in a period of 22 months that the honeycombing and the bronchiectasis and fibrosis had progressed. Also, these patients are more prone to get uh, malignancies, uh, and serial high-resolution chest CTs in, can help us detect bronchogenic cancers in these patients. And last, I'll be talking about contrast-enhanced CT scan of the chest. So the main indications for um, CECT are clinically suspected cardiothoracic or mediastinal pathology, and for staging and follow-up of lung cancer and other extrathoracic malignancies. Also, if the patient has known or suspected thoracic cardiovascular abnormalities, uh, like congenital required in terms of aortic stenosis, aneurysm and dissection, and Dr. Abara has talked in great detail about that. Uh, in evaluation of patients with suspected acute or chronic pulmonary emboli and pulmonary arterial hypertension. It is invaluable to evaluate patients with blunt and penetrating trauma, post-operative patients and surgical complications, and um, evaluation of chest wall pathology and pleural diseases. Also for um, further workup of medical complications in the ICU or other settings, contrast enhanced chest CT is invaluable. And a few examples, a CT angiogram of the chest showing a filling defect in the right main pulmonary artery and the anterior right upper lobe segmental branch. And the lung windows show nice and forked in the right um, lower lobe. And these findings can be confirmed with coronal and sagittal uh, reconstructions, which is a great advantage of the volumetric uh, multi-slice CT scan, as you can see this filling defect here, as well as the infarct. Um, this particular patient had um, shortness of breath, dyspnea, and weight loss, and the chest X-ray showed a right upper lobe mass. For further workup of this mass, um, contrast-enhanced CT scan was obtained, which shows a hypervascular mass. You can see the vascular mass on the coronal images with some distal atelectasis and an endobronchial extension. And um, a diagnosis of a vascular tumor like carcinoid was suggested. In addition, this advanced knowledge of hypervascularity was very helpful to the clinical team because they were prepared for any untoward leading complications. Um, and this came out to be uh, atypical carcinoid on pathology. So in conclusion, the routine non-contrast CT scan of the chest is an, very important in uh, workup of lung nodules, pneumonia with ne negative or equivocal chest x-ray, and for biopsy purpose. Uh, High-resolution chest CT is a non-contrast scan, and it is very important to diagnose and manage restrictive and severe obstructive lung diseases for workup of pulmonary arterial hypertension, diffuse lung and occupational lung diseases that are suspected on chest X-ray, and contrast-enhanced CT scan of the chest is invaluable in evaluating pulmonary embolism, mediastinal pathologies, and on tumor or surgical complications. And uh, you can, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, you can email me, and uh, we do have the consult chest uh, phone number as well. Thank you very much.